Hi there coaches, this is Luke Stanton coming to you on uh, March 20th. I want to go over a couple of things to get ready for the tryouts and review a couple of the procedures with you coaches. First, just to give you an idea of the numbers of what we're looking at at tryouts. We have about 40 mites trying out, 92 squirts trying out, 84 peewees trying out, and 57 bantams trying out. Um, so we're going to have a lot of kids on the ice, um, and I'll go over with you in a minute how we break them up. Uh, but before we get to the tryouts, I want to go for the piece of the puzzle that we're still missing. I'm missing coaches' evaluations, player evaluations from Derek Cormier on the Mike level. On the squirt level, I'm missing from Shane Wise and from Brian Doherty. Um, from the Peewee level, I'm still missing it from LeClaire. And from the Bantam level, I'm missing DePronio, Corey McPherson, and uh, uh, Pat Brennans. I need those coaches' evaluations. We need those for the tryouts, and I'll explain to you why. Um, another thing I want to go over with you is one of the coaches, actually two of the coaches asked me, can you tell me what drills we, we are doing or what I can do to get my players ready for the tryouts? Uh, and, and honestly, the single most important thing you can go over with your players before the tryouts is the four most important things to remember. Number one, this is a tryout. It is not a practice. Your players should be out there paying attention to the individual instructions for the drills. That's for the first night. When we switch to four and four, I'll explain to you what they should be doing to get ready for that. The second thing is do not fool around out there. I can't tell you how many times I'm out there um, just running the tryouts and you see kids out there on the skate around tripping kids, fooling around, knocking kids down. Unfortunately, the evaluators who are watching see that occur and it can be a mark against the player. The players should be out there ready to try to make the highest team they can. Also, in keeping with that, do the drill. Again, if a player is fooling around in line, talking to his friend, not paying attention, and he comes through the drill for the first time and doesn't do it correctly, it's very obvious to the evaluators. This player did not pay attention to the drill. So do the drill correctly. And the fourth and most important thing is give 100%. At all times that your players are out there, they should be giving 100% to the drill, with their efforts in listening to what the drill is, and to working as a team. Um, I'd like to go over now briefly the importance and what we do on each night. There are three separate night of tryouts. The first night of tryouts is skills. The second night is a brief skill, and then we go into the four on four. And the third night is the four on four, straight four on four. Uh, the first night, uh, we're bringing in prohibitions. They'll have four coaches there. They'll be running four skill stations. The evaluators will be on the bench or in the penalty box watching the skills and writing things down. More importantly, the pro ambition coaches will also be evaluating the players. They will look at things like skating, ability to pivot, ability to do crossovers, ability to play hockey. Um, Derek and I just finished speaking to them at pro ambitions and they said what they have tried to do and they have run tryouts in a bunch of other towns is they try to in that first night of skills is to see the kids hockey ability to move a puck, a very short ice, um, small ice um, station situations. So they will be running that. The people who will be evaluating on the skill night will be two groups, pro ambitions and the coaches. All of the players out there are given a penny with a number on it. The coaches list what they do to evaluate has numbers on it, colors and numbers, and they write down those numbers. So after the first night, they come in here to the boardroom, their score sheet, if you will, is handed to a representative from Waltham Youth Hockey, who that night enters that information into the computer program. And what is that? That's a num numerical value given to that player's talent. Um, now, so you p coaches know, it's nothing magical. More often than not, the people that run the committees, which are four board members, at each, uh, a board member at each level, just say, look, at the squirt level, we're gonna have, it looks like we're gonna have 92 players, which will be about six teams. So if a one means the kid should probably play on the one team, a six means they should be on the six team. They do it pretty quickly. So those numbers get entered into and they remain consistent over time. It's a numerical value of the player's skills as seen by the four evaluators from Waltham Youth Hockey, the board representative who's running that committee, and pro ambitions. The second night, and, and if I could for a minute, uh, on the first night we divide the kids, the players get divided up alphabetically. It's simple, you do it by alphabet. So you can have one player skating out there with a six, uh, six player, it doesn't matter. We're just evaluating them, the individual skills. The second night, we go to a short skill session, usually run by the people that are on the ice. Pro Ambitions has done their work. They've done the skill portion of it. More importantly, we go to a four-on-four. -four. And 
as gets asked every year, oh, I didn't know we should be doing four and four. I didn't know what to tell my players for the four and four. Your players from your team will be out there with kids that may have skill much better than them, much worse than them. What we're looking for the second night, what the evaluators are looking for that second night, is how do kids compare? Um, again, it's by the color of the penny and the number of the player. And they're just looking at how they appear. Now, so you coaches know, if you were sitting in the stands watching, it would be very obvious when you see the squirts try out that there's a player who's a one player and he's out there on a four and four with a squirt six player. That's true. And the evaluators see that. But more importantly, as I said in the last video, it's a collaboration of information. The coaches, uh, excuse me, the evaluators are able to compare that. How do these kids look? In truth, the more difficult thing is the middle teams because it's pretty easy to pick the best skilled players and the worst skilled players. And we encourage the evaluators to, again, go by numerical value of what they think. That second night, they come into the boardroom and they sit down and that number is again entered into it. So, player Black82 has a number the, the first night, Black82 has a number the second night. Those two numbers are put together. They are also maintained in the database by what that evaluator gave him. And I will explain to you why after the third night that comes into, that, that can come into uh, play. The fourth night, uh, excuse me, the third night, by far the most important night vis-a-vis um, -vis what you see out there as an evaluator is the players after their ranking the first two nights are given a numerical value. The players are divided according to skill. So, it should be no secret to you, it should be no secret to anyone in the program, that that third night, the first group of eight players go, that go out there are the ones that pro ambitions, that the evaluators have seen over the last two nights, and that they feel can play at the top level uh, for the squirt, mites, peewees, or bantams, okay? That's how it works. Now, this night, the evaluators have the right, and it sometimes happens, that they want to see a kid switched around. So you watch the first eight out there and say, wow, that's it, that's the A team, I have no chance of making it. That's not the case at all. A evaluator can ask to see a kid, kids can be moved up and down. More importantly, they can see how the kids compare against each other, players with similar talent. So that's what happens on the third night. On the third night, and this is very important, the coaches come into the room, excuse me, the evaluators come into the room and they sit down and very quickly with the member of the board, that's the fifth person on the committee, and those evaluators quickly make up a team, make up at the squirt level six teams, right across the board, based upon the numbers they have gave them. The numbers from the previous two nights and the number they have that night. So, for example, what can happen is you may have a player looking at the sheet from the uh, compilation of scores the last two nights that you had rated very high. Yet when he comes up to be thrown up on this team, just to get a general sense, they say, wait a minute, he didn't look good when he played against kids of equal level. What's going on here? So they might have a question. That list gets just printed up here on the board very quickly, and the evaluators leave. Their job is not done, though. They're asked to come back within a, within a week, and they sit down again with a board member who's running the committee. And that board member has written down everything on this, and they put it back up on the board. And they discuss again what their evaluations were. Now, it will have given the board, uh, the Walter Youth Hockey, a chance to compile all the numbers into the spreadsheet, and the individual coaches will get the individual rating sheets back. And that is very, very important, and it comes back to your evaluations, because we encourage the evaluators to write notes on that last night about players. And again, not that little Tommy is the great skater and a nice boy who deserves to be on the A team. No, very quick. Good skater, no hockey sense, little hockey things for coaches to remember what they saw in that player. And that's what happens in this room. And they begin to place the teams for a final review. And the responsibility of the board member is the, as the fifth person is to make a determination um, if there's a tiebreaker or information um, regarding uh, what he saw if he's asked. So that's how they do it. Now at that point, the evaluator's job as to what they saw on the ice is done. They ask at that point, you coaches to come into the room individually. So for example, let's say at the Bantam level, Richard LeClaire was the PB1 coach. Um, the coaches come in, uh, that's a poor example, a coach at that level comes in and gets a chance to see because on the night when they come back, the names 
on, instead of numbers so they have an idea of the names. That coach comes in, which is you coaches, come in, sit down, and you look at that board, and you see what it says, and you can discuss with them what you feel. Now I should caution you, the second night that those evaluators come back, they have your coaches, your player evaluations. They have them in their envelopes, so they can have looked at how did this coach rate this player that we had some debate about. So, you're gonna, when you come in, these rating sheets are very, very important. Because if you come in and suddenly change your tune or have a different opinion, they're going to ask, how come on your player evaluations you had this player ranked at this? It is, as I said before, it's a collaboration of information. And having done this for a few years, I can tell you that more often than not, a coach talks about maybe one player. Oftentimes they say, no, it appears pretty fair. I can tell you that in all the years of doing this, I have never seen a situation where a coach says, you know, you have a player on the one team, he should be on the six team. You can have coaches debate about the top three players on every team and the bottom three on the team ahead of them. It happens all the time. There is some discussion there. And they're looking at your coach's evaluations, kids' hockey sets, does he fit within the team framework? All of these things are important. And the belief is that that's the way to pick teams. Um, just for some history, uh, when I first came into Walton Youth Hockey, the coaches used to pick the teams. And that was, for Richard LeClaire, it was great because as a PB1 coach, he'd have people buying him gifts, I guess, so he could get ready and he could say, oh, I'll, I'll take this kid, I can work with him. That didn't work. Uh, for a few years, we had nine people evaluating, which was a very interesting way to do things, except all those nine people, a number of them, or some of them, were bound to talk to their friends. It, it shouldn't be that way. What the coaches, and the, uh, excuse me, what the evaluators do in this room, what the coaches do in this room, should be a confidential process to get those teams picked. Um, that's the way we can get these people back to do evaluations. Um, and we ask the evaluators and we ask the coaches to keep what's said in this room confidential uh, because it does no good. Uh, Waltham Youth Hockey provides a positive place for players to develop skills as a hockey player. That's the intention of our tryouts and that's what we try to do every year. So, now you have an understanding of the tryout process hopefully. Now you know the importance of your player evaluations. Uh, this week, I would suggest to you, you work with your players a little bit on the 4 and 4 if you get a chance. And on the 4 and 4, when these kids go out, regardless of who they're next to, they should say, two guys are playing, the player should say this even at the might level, who's going out to the two forward positions, who's going out to the two defensive positions, and how are they all going to work together to put the puck in the net? How are they all going to work together in the defensive zone to keep the puck out of the net? We want to see the kids, how they work together. Um, and that's the way the teams are picked. Uh, I think it's a good, I think over the years it's been found to be a good process, I think there are a lot less complaints than there used to be, uh, and we try to do as best we can as evaluators and as a board, and we ask you coaches to play the vitally important role of giving us your honest evaluation of players and participating in this process. And I'm confident that if we all do that, at the end of the day, come early May, we'll have all our teams picked and we'll all be looking forward to next year. If you have any questions, shoot me an email um, or give me a call at any time. Thank you, coaches.